So the next speaker is Antonio Vigela Barranco from the Gleb Vatag Institute of Physics from University of Campinas. And uh, he will talk about continuous variable quantum K distribution uh, with a neo Gaussian approach. So, so. thank you, Roberto. Uh, well, uh, I would like to thank the organizers of this uh, very nice workshop uh, that I'm having the honor to participate. I mean, especially because it's a special occasion of uh, Professor Dadonov's um, uh, 75th birthday. And congratulations, Victor. Uh, I. I'm going to talk about this uh, subject, but maybe uh, some of you are not uh, uh, acquainted to it. So I, I will give part of it is going to be an in, in introduction about uh, quantum key distribution area. Yeah. So, uh, well, this is this work is done in collaboration with uh, Professor Hoversi, who uh, already gave a talk uh, a couple of days ago, and that, that, that's the research team. Uh, about the uh, works we are developing in this field. So, well, first of all, I <laughs> like to remind uh, that 20 years ago, wasn't that, Victor? Uh, uh, I had the uh, honor to participate of this um, um, book. I have a chapter uh, written on it about uh, non-classical states of light. And I mean, I know Victor for quite some time. Uh, I even uh, came back to Brazil in 1993, in the same year as first uh, visit of Victor uh, to Brazil. Uh, well, the, this is the, there is a connection here with uh, what I'm going to talk about. And the, uh, this uh, work by Victor uh, about the even not coherent states which was, I mean, as far as I know, the first um, um, work uh, presenting the, uh, which is known nowadays as uh, the cat states, yeah, Schrodinger cat states in the, of the electromagnetic field or, or the harmonic oscillator. So this was back to uh, 1973, 74, maybe. And well, that, that's the, uh, the uh, oops. Um, you you have this uh, uh, coherent state, yeah, the quasi-classical state, and you can uh, define this uh, even uh, or odd uh, coherent states, uh, which are states uh, having uh, even photon number and uh, or odd photon numbers, yeah. So this corresponds to the, the, the cut state as we know nowadays. So I, and some years ago, I got to know this paper by these uh, Nambu and co-authors in which they um, present a quantum key distribution protocol based on coherent states and Schrodinger cut states. So it, this caught my attention because it was something different from the usual uh, protocols involving a um, uh, single photon state, like the DB84, yeah? So I, I started to, to, to want to know more about it. Anyway, uh, this is a brief outline of what I'm gonna talk about. And the first I'm gonna give an account about quantum key distribution. Uh, the, discrete or continuous variables and then move to uh, Gaussian uh, versus non-Gaussian uh, states, yeah? Well, what's cryptography? As a method that makes possible uh, secure communication between parties, yeah? In the presence of a malicious party, yeah? Known as Eve. So you have a system to encrypt a message and then you can um, send it through a public channel and in a way that uh, Eve, uh, the spy, yeah, is not able to read the message, yeah? And normally this involves keys, yeah, which are ways of combining your message um, and to, to create a crypt cryptogram, yeah? 
Well, this, it's well known that the, this is a secure way of doing that, the Vernon cipher, yeah. So basically, you, uh, well, this is the, the um, modern version of, uh, in which you um, um, make, uh, uh, transform your, your uh, message in a binary code, um, binary uh, uh, numbers, and then you uh, combine it with a, a, a random sequence of uh, uh, zeros and ones, and you have the cryptogram. And this uh, was proved by uh, Shannon that this is a, a secure, a conditionally secure way of uh, encrypting a message. So it's not possible to break it because uh, normally, uh, I mean, uh, in doing that, you <coughs> Uh, combine a sequence with a, a random sequence, so you have a random sequence, and so you cannot extract any information from that. So this is good, but we have a problem, which is uh, you need a key for doing that, and you can use it only once. And well, it has to be random and also the same size of the message. So this is not, not practical because you, you have to produce a key for every message and so you have to find a way to distribute this key. And so this is not, not a practical way of doing it unless uh, in certain circumstances like in military, um, uh, uh, the military. Yeah. So um, you, we would like to have a, uh, alternatives, yeah, because uh, we want to uh, make some bank transactions and buy things in the internet or whatever, and we need to encrypt information for that. So, um, in the late 70s, the, it appeared this uh, very interesting idea of a, a public key cryptography, yeah, which uh, uses the two keys. So you have a, uh, a public key and a private key, and you encrypt your message using uh, a public key. And in order to uh, decrypt your message, you need uh, the private key, or you can also perform uh, a, a very complicated mathematical operation in order to get the message yeah uh, so this is not an unconditionally secure because you have a fast enough computer so you can just uh, uh, decrypt the um, uh, protocols such the uh, RSA which is a very very uh, popular um, asymmetric key cryptography system yeah well um, so nowadays people are talking about uh, quantum computers and this is a, a, um, uh, uh, people are getting afraid of uh, quantum computers because they could uh, make uh, break these codes, yeah? So when it, one of the alternatives is the, the, the quantum uh, key distribution, which uh, would uh, allow the uh, generation of uh, keys between two, two parties, yeah? This was devised in the, about uh, uh, 1984, by these guys, Bennett and Brassard. And basically the system, it's, uh, you, you, you generate a system to generate keys, so you, you can generate uh, random keys um, simultaneously uh, between two parties, and then you can use the one-time pad to make the uh, secure uh, communication. So that's the paper of Bernan Brassard. It was even uh, not published in, the, in, the, uh, in a paper, in a journal, yeah? So it was a conference paper. Uh, no one actually believed at that time because the uh, BB84 requires uh, single photon sources. So people say, well, we don't have a single photon sources, so this one 
will not work. Yeah. But then uh, ben, uh, Bennett himself, he, he just tried to do the experiment in 1989 uh, with a attenuated laser source, and he, this is the first uh, setup of a DB84. He took a, a student to help him, and so he, people start thinking that they could do this with uh, attenuated laser sources. Um, yeah, so uh, how does it work? So uh, Alice prepares uh, a single photon state and then sends send it through uh, a channel, quantum channel, yeah, and then uh, Bob makes some measurements on this light. And you, you suppose that uh, Eve has unlimited technological resources. So in doing that, you generate a raw key. Uh, what's that? I mean, you have the exchange of uh, um, information. And firstly, a random chooses bits, um, which are the, the elements of the key. And she also chooses a basis. So you have a polarization encoding of these signals. And she sends these polarized photons using the, 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 this, this uh, uh, basis choice. And uh, Bob randomly uh, chooses uh, basis also. And so you have some measurements made by, made by, by Bob. So they make a classical communication and they can uh, agree when the bases are coincident. So that's, uh, in this case, the, the Bob is sure that he's getting the same signal set by, by, by Alice, yeah? So you have what's called the sifted key. And after that, you make some um, procedures, a classical procedure, yeah? You just, it's a, just have an algorithm to, uh, um, process the, the the sifted key, and uh, this shortens the key. Yeah, so you you this procedure uh, is known as privacy uh, error correction and privacy amplification. You just uh, um, uh, take to zero the knowledge that uh, Eve could get by Eve's dropping. Yeah. Okay. So you you in principle you will have this. Uh, um, uh, oops, sorry about that. This uh, generation of this common key. Um, but of course you need this uh, single photons source to, to make it work. Otherwise, uh, if you can uh, get information, if you have other kind of sources, yeah. But in practice, uh, it's a laser source still uh, used, yeah, the, the uh, very attenuated laser. And so you need um, uh, special detectors, yeah, to, in order to, this is, a, I mean, single photon detectors that, which are expensive and you have to cool them down to, uh, measure the signals, yeah, by Bob. So in practice, you, <laughs> they use, I mean, even the, the, the missiles, the, 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 the um, Chinese satellite, yeah, they use the attenuated laser source for, uh, to perform a, uh, the transmission through the quantum channel. So you, you, you use a very, very uh, uh, attenuated laser source in practice, yeah. And you have to make some tricks in order to get it uh, uh, secure. You have to prove its security. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, this is just some uh, properties. I can skip that. So the, the, uh, this is how to characterize the, um, the quantum field. Yeah, so uh, quantum state of the field. Uh, like uh, the, the single photon state is a non-Gaussian Wigner function, while coherent state has a, a Gaussian Wigner function. So uh, we want to do some something different, yeah. And what I call continuous variable uh, 
uh, quantum key distribution. And what's the mot motivation for that? Yeah, one, one of the, the, the points I would like to stress is that uh, we would like to have a better integration to existing communication systems, yeah, because the single photon um, uh, BB, BB, BB84 based on single photons, uh, in general, you need, well, you need a special source, special detectors, and a dedicated line for doing that, which is, I mean, we would like to expand this to, and try to integrate it to the uh, communications, communication systems which are already existing, yeah? So how could we do that? Well, there are some proposals about it, and uh, the thing is that to make a different encoding of the signals, uh, this time in uh, quadrature variables instead of the uh, uh, polarization and single photon detection, yeah? So the, these uh, things came out in the uh, year two, 2000, and there are some proposals for that. It started with a squeeze coherent states, and people realized that it, that, that could be done via coherent states. And, uh, and then and the measurement, it's, uh, it does not require the uh, special single photo detectors, yeah? You can use the um, uh, intensity detectors um, because it is, it's made a homodyne detection. So you, you, you measure, you make a, interfere your signal with a, a local oscillator, which is a strong coherent state. And so you have this, uh, uh, Quadrature measurements, yeah. You can then you can create uh, two bases, a vertical and horizontal base, and do your your quantum key distribution protocol. Uh, so people started to elaborate on that. Yeah, uh, mainly uh, this uh, people from uh, Grandier Group in France. Yeah, they uh, made. Uh, uh, protocol, which is uh, basically a Gaussian modul modulated uh, of signals. Uh, what's that? Well, so you have a, a picture in phase space. And so this represents a coherent state with a certain amplitude. And so you randomly choose, a, uh, each time you set a signal, you choose, a, a, um, you pick up a, 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 an amplitude from a, a Gaussian distribution, yeah? So uh, you hide your information in a Gaussian distribution with added noise, yeah? Uh, this is made by Alice. Then the uh, uh, Bob make, makes uh, um, homodyne detection of the signals. Then you have a uh, protocol, which is uh, continuous variable. So you use a continuous parameter with the alpha, with is the amplitude of the coherent state. And you perform the uh, um, uh, uh, homodyne measurements. And so you, you can have a very uh, similar uh, processing of the um, post-processing, yeah? I mean, it's not actually similar. In this case, is really uh, very, uh, elaborate uh, way of the, the reconciliation. And this is one of the problems with when you have this Gaussian modulation. So uh, this, uh, this has been proven that it's uh, unconditional secure against collective attacks, which are a very, very general uh, a class of attacks that could, can be made by Eve. So uh, the uh, when you have the Gaussian modulation of Gaussian, Gaussian states, for instance, coherent states, you so what we call the uh, all Gaussian protocol. Yeah, so you have a Gaussian state and a Gaussian modulation of the this state. Yeah. Nevertheless, <laughs> you have uh, uh, you can always have a problem. Yeah, with this business. So you. Um, because of this uh, reconciliation using uh, continuous variables, it's uh, uh, lengthy, so it takes a long time. Uh, and so 
this limits the kill rate and also the distance that they can uh, ha make this uh, protocol work. So uh, this is not good. I mean, it's uh, the protocol works, but it's very limited. So I would like to expand this, and this uh, came up. People came up with the idea of a discrete modulation of a coherent state. So you, instead of having this Gaussian modulation, uh, you just choose make a, a, a four states. You have to encode your bits, and you you, you keep this uh, as uh, your only state, the only state you're going to use in your protocol. Yeah. So. Uh, the thing works similarly to the BB84 because you have these bits, yeah. So uh, Bob um, um, measures uh, randomly measure uh, chooses measuring one of the quadratures, and then some some values are coming out, and so uh, he informs the, the which base basis is X and or Y. He made the measurements and. He uh, discloses the absolute values uh, of, of the, the measurements as well, not, not the signal level, because then, then you uh, uh, sorry the, the sign yeah you 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 you, you don't you don't uh, reveal the sign to to Alice of course because Eve is is, is <laughs> listening the the, the 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 public communication so uh, anyway so this is enough to. Uh, to have the uh, protocol going. And the thing is that uh, there are a few issues like the security proofs when you have discrete modulation is not that easy. So there are uh, some papers coming out now uh, by two different groups and they don't even agree of uh, <laughs> What, what, what's the level of security and performance of this kind of protocol? Why? Because uh, if you have a Gaussian state and a non-Gaussian modulation, which is discrete modulation, so, uh, I mean, it's not uh, easy to prove its security. However, in, under certain circumstances, uh, the security is proved. So, uh, we, are, so we, we came uh, and coming now to, to our proposal that's to uh, go further the non-Gaussian domain, but using non-Gaussian states rather than coherent states. Why? Well, this is because the, we also want, we like to make quantum repeaters. So uh, the, 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 the signal gets faint, so you like to amplify it. And this is not easy to do with quantum light. So uh, there are several proposals for quantum repeaters, but the point is that you have Gaussian states like, such as coherent states, uh, it's difficult to amplify uh, such states using uh, uh, Gaussian resources, which is maybe uh, a way of doing it or trying to do it. So this is, uh, um, doesn't seem very easy to do, thing to do. Uh, and we would like to, to, apart from that, we would like to have a higher key rates too. I mean, so, want to improve these protocols, but using a different source. So our proposal uh, is uh, it's uh, uh, using uh, non-Gaussian states, making some kind of uh, non-Gaussian operation, such as, oops, sorry. Uh, here we have this photon added, then subtract the coherent state. This is, I mean, uh, uh, this is uh, generated in some labs, like in um, Bellini's, huh? Bellini's labs. He, he does that. Uh, of course, it's not easy to do, but uh, this is, I mean, we want to show a way of uh, moving into, uh, out of the Gaussian domain, yeah? So this state is interesting because uh, it's uh, obviously has, has a, a uh, vegan function, which is uh, 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 negative, has a neg negative part, it has uh, some deformation also compared to coherent state, yeah? And we made this uh, preliminary study uh, just uh, uh, seeing uh, uh, 
the, the performance of protocol using such states compared to the coherent state protocol under specific attacks. So there we have the, uh, for instance, in intercept with an attack, uh, and beam splitter attack. So uh, under those attacks, the, the, there is an advantage of using the uh, photon added then subtract the coherent states. Also, uh, they can be written in such a, a simple form, uh, the, 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 this uh, PASC states, yeah. It's a, it's a superposition of, of coherent state plus uh, this um, photon added coherent state, but it has this amplitude alpha multiplying. So as we use a small alpha for that, so uh, this state, um, it's, an, it's a non-Gaussian state, but nevertheless, it, it's not that far from a Gaussian state. So the, the, this uh, um, stimulated us to go further, if we could prove its security in face of uh, more general attacks, yeah. So that's the our uh, next paper, which has been published uh, recently, more recently, yeah. Let me see, uh, yeah. So this is uh, this is wrong here, but anyway, it was uh, was published last year, yeah this uh, other paper. And, well, basically we calculate the secret key rate uh, uh, under the, uh, this uh, um, Gaussian collective attacks, yeah? And, well, I'm not gonna present the details of the calculations, but basically we calculate the difference between the um, uh, mutual information between uh, Alice and Bob and the, uh, this uh, whole level information, which is the, basically the information uh, that Eve gets by spying, yeah? So this has to be <laughs> positive, of course, of, uh, in order to have a secure communication, yeah? Anyway, we have some parameters here, and also uh, uh, th this is to show that we, uh, compare, uh, this function is related to, um, uh, is used to in the middle of the calculations, yeah, so we use it uh, to uh, evaluate uh, uh, the, uh, this function z, as a, uh, this is a function of parameter alpha, yeah, and we have uh, the, the, the black line here is the, uh, the dysfunction for a Gaussian modula uh, modulated protocol, which is the, uh, the ideal, it would, it would be the ideal protocol regarding security, yeah, the security. And the, uh, this uh, blue and red curves, they uh, represent the, well, the four state protocol, which we want, we, we, we want to, uh, I'm talking about, and this is, using two states, yeah, so uh, I have to get close, as close as possible to the Gaussian modulated curve in order to have a secure protocol, yeah. So obviously this happens for small values of alpha. I mean, you, you, yeah. of course, you have an overlap uh, uh, of this, this uh, signal states. So these are, a few uh, key rates we calculated uh, of uh, secret key, key, uh, key rates. And in, well, this is the blue one, is the photon added then subtract the coherent state versus the coherent state, yeah? So uh, you see that this, this is the, the key generation rate, the bits per, per pulse uh, as a function of a distance, yeah? And we have uh, some, uh, oh, this is the, for a, a standard um, uh, fiber, yeah? So we have losses taken into account. And also we have some excess noise, which is given by this uh, epsilon parameter. 
Um, so the, the, this, the, the right plot here is, uh, uh, oh, oh. yeah, the, 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 the you, you have the, this, uh, what is on epsilon is sky, isn't it? Well, I, I, I switched the, anyway, uh, so you, you, in fact, this beta parameter, I forgot saying that, it's the uh, reconciliation efficiency. So, you, I mean, uh, it is always, you have to be, put some factors on them. Five minutes left. And so this is for ideal reconciliation. This is for 80% uh, efficiency. Five minutes left. Okay, thank you. Uh, then, uh, and, uh, and we have uh, this, uh, of course, this, uh, um, uh, when the saturation of uh, the key rates, uh, uh, saturates uh, for shorter distance, you have, we have a, a, so more noise on your line. And you see that the, the coherent state ha has a not so good performance compared to the PASCs, yeah? So you can have, uh, uh, make a secure communication for uh, larger, uh, through larger distances if you have a non-Gaussian state. So this is, of course, this is, <laughs> uh, I'm skipping uh, lots of calculations and details, but there is a nice, um, a nice interpretation of these results from phase space point of view. Uh, these are uh, bigger functions of the states we are using. So, uh, so you see that, and, and this is this is made for the optimal uh, parameters. Yeah, I forgot saying that we uh, these amplitudes of alpha they are chosen in order to maximize the key rates for a, a given uh, excess noise. So, I mean we. Because the things change, very, very, in a very dramatic way sometimes. But uh, here, you, you see that the overlap in phase space is uh, uh, approaches more a form of a circle in the case of the PASCs. So you, you, in some sense, you you get closer to the Gaussian modulation, which is a perfect circle in phase space. Yeah. So. Uh, this is why you have this deformation in your signal states. They, they are slightly deformed, so you, you're able to cover uh, more efficiently uh, phase space. So this, this is a, a way of uh, seeing that, yeah? Well, this is a table just showing the uh, possible protocols of quantum key distribution. So we have non-Gaussian states, Gaussian states. So uh, the BB84, the, the first protocol using single photon states, it's a non Gaussian state. Um, uh, nevertheless, the detection is, is discrete, yeah? So uh, um, here we have our protocol, which is using is a non Gaussian state, but it's a continuous detection, yeah? The, the homodyne detection. And we also have this other Gaussian state protocols. Uh, so just to conclude then, we, uh, we believe that the continuous variable quantum key distribution is, would be easier to integrate in existing communication networks. Uh, Non-Gaussian states, as we saw, uh, can outperform the protocol using coherent states, especially where you have a noisy line. So this is important because in real world applications, Two minutes left. Anyway, uh, <laughs> okay. Well, this can pave the way for using non Gaussian resources for quantum key distribution. Thank you very much. So we have uh, five minutes for questions. I have a question here. Thank you. Um, how efficient is the production of the photon added subtracted 
state and and does it risk any contamination by the presumably you start with a coherent state yeah, yeah sure we uh well this uh, we are assuming yeah the uh, perfect source of uh basques yeah of course uh there are some experiments that i cannot remember very well in the figures but of course you should uh, we should mul multiply the, the the key rate by a factor which is would mean the efficiency of of having these states being generated. So we left it open because we still can have some developments and get more efficient sources than we have today. So, but it's true, yeah, we, we should, I mean, if we, if we have a low efficiency of uh, generation of uh, such states, so we can go below the performance of a coherent state protocol, so. Yeah. And do you recall about the contamination issue? You know, if you only convert some fraction of the B, maybe there's a whole load of coherent state stuff coming through causing trouble. Oh, sorry, I didn't hear you. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I'll talk to you later about it. No, I was no, just okay. asking about the contamination with the original coherent state that's, that, that's the source. Because you, you have a coherent state... You oh, oh yeah ah, no yeah. no there's no contamination. You add and then you uh, yeah. subtract when uh, you make it. No, I need what you mean. I need, uh, is this what you mean? Uh, this this is the past state. So it's a coherent state plus this this this. The, uh, I mean, this is a way of because no, we, we. But there was the one in the slide before. Sorry, no, the, no, no. This is this is the. Uh. No. The, 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 this is a way of uh, of seeing that the, the for for small alpha. So you have a a um, yet close to coherent state. I see. So, th but this was an approximation to the a a dagger alpha. Uh, no, yeah. this is exact. But we uh, what we do is that because we actually use the tools uh, which are <laughs> appropriate for Gaussian states. Because there isn't a theory of doing such proofs for non Gaussian state. It doesn't exist. Uh, so people, they try to, um, well, nowadays they are, they are, they are making some um, sophisticated ways of proving the security when you have the discrete modulation uh, of coherent states, for coherent states, yeah? But even that is difficult to do. We are proposing something a bit further. Um, but still using the tools which are <laughs> for, as if it were, Gaussian states. So uh, to do that, we have to, have to be very close to a coherent state. And this happens if alpha is, is small. Yeah, and this can be seen here. This is what I put this. We have this uh, nice way of writing the... But, I didn't mention, but there are other proposals are popping out uh, of making non-Gaussian uh, um, non-Gaussian operations in, on coherent states protocols like quantum scissors. So this is another kind of uh, uh, non-Gaussian operation that would uh, improve the performance of protocol. It's different from this, but is also. I mean, maybe not that efficient. So we started getting some issues, but anyway, uh, this is, I, I mean, th th this is, uh, there are issues, but at the same time, uh, there they can be some improvements if we work on that. So. Thank you. And uh, there is time for uh, another question. Sort of Vito. Oh, my question is, uh, just looking at this slide, uh, you wrote for small alpha something, uh, state approaches Gaussian. Are there some uh, limitations of the best choices of this alpha? For instance, can you use alpha equal 1,000, 100, or you prefer alpha or the order of unity or much smaller than unity? What uh, restrictions? Well, there are two reasons if I... Uh, two reasons. One is that uh, we we cannot be uh, too far from a uh, coherent state because we are using the the tools for the proof is based on that. 
And second, uh, the, uh, uh, in order to, to hide the, the, the signals, you have to have an, uh, an overlap in, um, of these states because then otherwise Eve would be very easily discriminate the signals. Yeah? So there has to be a significant overlap. Uh, but uh, it's also not easy to choose what's the uh, um, optimum the optimum uh, amplitude of alpha for a given a given protocol. So what we did is we uh, used the, the, the amplitude which maximizes a key rate for a given uh, excess noise. So when we did this for the coherent state protocol and the for the PASCs. So and then com compare the, the optimum situations uh, in each case. So that's Thank you. So, any other question? So we have to use it to establish a connection between São Paulo and Campinas, a quantum one. <laughs> we have the fiber along the Bandeirantes. Oh, so, so yeah, we, we would like to. Yeah. Let's thank again, Diana. Thank you. So the next talk will start in a few minutes and it will be Daniel Valente.